Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Catholic Mass on Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter, here at St. Henry Catholic Church in Gresham, Oregon. Jesus makes an appearance. I always pictured you as being a little taller. <laughs> but since he rose from the dead, he did go to a new height. So as we gather this evening, I welcome all of you and thank our Jim and Peggy, our greeters, and CM, our reader, and our musicians, Michelle, Joe, and Barbara. My name is Father Charles Zock. Let us begin with our opening song. and favor of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. As we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, we see Jesus Christ as our shepherd. He will lead us to green pastures and he will not desert us. And so we cry out, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To John. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. That is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. The Good Shepherd is calling. <laughs> I'm going to start with a few memories. Angels we have heard on high. Shepherds widest jubilee. While shepherds watch their flocks by night. Silent night, holy night. Shepherds quake at the sight. The angels first announced, then the shepherds came. The shepherds have a special place in all of Scripture. Jesus uses them as a metaphor for how he takes care of us, the sheep. He's the good shepherd. And so it was that shepherds were the first to visit the newborn king. 
If Jesus had been born in the inn, there was no room, the shepherds wouldn't have been invited to come into the inn. It was by design that the shepherds had accessibility to this newborn king. And so Jesus later on, hearing the story of the shepherds and knowing all about how shepherds take care of the flock, designated that he is the good shepherd, not a hired hand. And the good shepherd doesn't need any sheep dogs to control the sheep. All a good shepherd has to do, and I saw this once in Israel, a shepherdess was not even having to round up the sheep. She just pulled out her flute and started playing, and they followed her. That's the image of the good shepherd. And it's not by accident that David, King David, was early on a young shepherd. So we gather today to celebrate the Good Shepherd. Jesus wants us to know that he is going to take care of us. The Good Shepherd in Psalm 23 takes care of the sheep. So the sheep will say, there is nothing I shall want. He leads me to green pastures. It's important that we take Jesus at his word. I am the good shepherd. And then he says, and I will lay down my life for my sheep, which he did. No one can take it from me. I chose to allow my life to end for the sheep. Almost invisible because we've taken it for granted. It's not by accident that the main shepherd of the archdiocese has a crozier. Sometimes it looks like a, a little hook at the end. It's not for hooking the sheep. It's to run off the wild animals that are trying to disperse the sheep. That's the purpose of the crozier. And then that shepherd quality extends to the title given to the pastor. It means shepherd. It means I need to lay down my life for my sheep. Have I done that? Well, I'm still here. I must have failed. <laughs> Pastoral, our pastoral council and all the ministries that are pastoral. It's all about shepherding one another, taking care of the flock. Each of us do it in our own fashion. Parents are shepherds. How often have parents laid down their life for their children, for their flock? It's a marvelous image of the Good Shepherd. Though many of us haven't ever worked with sheep, most sheep are pretty docile because they trust the shepherd. So our responsibility as the sheep is to trust the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd will meet our needs, will lead us to green pasture, there will be nothing we shall want. We will not thirst. That image, important for us to have in the middle of Easter. The image of the Christ in front of us here doesn't have the wounds yet. But the wounds come because that's what the Good Shepherd has done for us risen from the dead. Everything he said about himself and it was written about in the scriptures, he fulfilled 
and he is fulfilling to this day for us. And then if that wasn't enough, the Good Shepherd even gives his body and blood as nourishment. What a metaphor for the Christ, the Good Shepherd. He doesn't even need any sheepdogs to round up the flock. All Jesus has to do is play the flute and they will come running because they know Jesus leads us to green pastures. And then as we read in the Gospel of John, the result of all of this is the hope and the promise to come. We know that we are in heaven when it is revealed. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Let us stand and recite our Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As the Good Shepherd tends his father's flock, we ask God to help our brothers and sisters. For our clergy and pastoral leaders, that their passion for Christ will awaken a hunger in us to know and serve God with our whole heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leadership that offers guidance in the care of the earth's resources, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters living in distant lands, especially in countries where violence, famine, and poverty are destroying their nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families who struggle to cope with illness, physical, mental, and emotional, may they know the comfort of God's healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for the living who miss them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, you sent your Son to care for your flock. Hear and grant what we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Shepherd and risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Through this mystery of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. This will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin.
Sisters and brothers, we pray together that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accepts our sacrifice to your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our healing of all His children. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy to these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed. He himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Henry and Cunegunda, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alexander and Peter, our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us share a sign of peace.
behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we're gradually making a move back to the church. So this is our last Saturday Mass here in the fireside room. We'll be over there for all Saturday services and Sunday services henceforth. The biggest thing was getting the uh, passageway of the Madonna Center opened, and it is opened. It's almost all painted right now, so we're making big progress. Then we'll put some light in and step at a time. Mm -hmm. The other thing is next week is First Communion weekend. So we have First Communions at the 5 o'clock Mass. Shouldn't be a problem for numbers unless we go to high risk, and then we'll just simply say we didn't hear the word. <laughs> I don't think that'll happen until Monday at any rate. So the other thing is uh, the 11 o'clock and 1.30 Masses, though, please, if you plan on attending that, don't, because the First Communion families will fill the church for the 11 and the 1.30. So we're encouraging you to come to a 5 o'clock or the 8.30 Mass on Sunday morning and um, or watch it on live stream. I think we're still under dispensation for Sunday Mass, so you're holier for being here because <laughs> you didn't lead with the requirement. Um, Archbishop Vlasny is scheduled for Wednesday, May 26th for confirmation for 55. Uh, same thing we'll hold with that. If you want to attend, uh, we'll have to be a mouse. Do the best you can. Um, the gym is being is totally demolished now. Uh, the walls and the flooring and all the new lighting, all of that is coming over the next three weeks. So we hope to finish the Madonna Center at the same time that the gym is done so we can enjoy it all summer and then have a dedication on August 8th with Bishop Smith presiding. And we will set up three rooms with receptions. So um, here, the gym, and also in the Madonna Center. And uh, there's no limit to the crowd because we'll live stream if necessary as the overflow. So we want the whole parish to set up 11 o'clock on August 8th. Um, as they, the kids used to say, be there or be square. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Yeah. The Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Know that the Lord Jesus Christ is your good shepherd, so we can go in peace to give glory and praise to God. Thanks Thanks God. God.